So we have completed the stretch of Fife Coastal Path from Lyne Kilns to here, Burnt Island, a town that sits on the northern shore of the Firth of Forth and has carried us right through the heart of this town. <laughs> this smells amazing. We've got a sourdough and a whole meal. <sighs> Burnt Island is a beautiful little coastal town situated perfectly here in Fife on this side of the Firth and Forth. With a population of 6,300, it has enjoyed a thriving history over the years from shipbuilding to aluminium and to trade. And with its position here with the harbour, it gives perfect links to Edinburgh, Granton, Leith and beyond. And it plays a very important part in the coastal path. It leads us up through the high street and then onto this pier that cuts around. But on a really good day when the tide's out, you can actually cut straight across from the point here, right across to Petitur Bay. Although famous for its shipbuilding and aluminium works, Burnt Island is most well known for this piece of land right here, known as the Lynx. The Lynx holds a massive and varied history here in Burnt Island of sport and competition and is still home to the world's second oldest Highland Games started in 1652 and every summer holds an annual carnival and fun fair. In 1541, King James V granted Burnt Island the right to hold a twice weekly market and a once yearly annual fair held on June 29th. It's the only time of the year that people from out with Burnt Island were allowed to come with their stalls, merchandise and their entertainment. Not only did it bring things to sell, it brought wild lions from Buffalo Bill, it brought helter skelter, it brought carnivals and it brought rides, all of which are still on show today. A modern version of course. The thriving fun fair and carnival runs every summer here for 13 weeks and is enjoyed by generations of families over and over every year. However, this piece of land that is becoming highly remembered for the Highland Games and the carnival has actually become the forgotten course. Because Burnt Island's origins of golf actually starts right here on the links which used to lay home to a five hole golf course. Officially, Burnt Island is registered as the 10th oldest golf club in the world, dating back to 1797. However, there is discussions and talks that golf was actually played here in the links as far back as 1688. And as we have walked this piece of land and flown the drone over the top, you can just about see remnants of what used to be here before. Some bunkers and maybe some outlines of greens, but that is not where we are playing golf today. Well, every old golf course should have an old clubhouse and we have been told by locals in the town that the golf tavern behind us was the unofficial clubhouse for the Lynx golf course here back in the 17th century to pop in for a little dram after the game and talk about the round. Although no longer a clubhouse, it now lays home to something pretty special, a fish and chip shop and I'm starving <laughs> so we're going in. <laughs> Well, I think for a start, everybody when they come and have fish and chips, they seem to go away full and uh, it's not too expensive, it's a great day out. And it's tradition, isn't it? I do like to be beside the seaside. And we walk along the prom, come and get fish and chips. Usually the fun fair's here for three months. You know, nice high street, the, the whole, just the whole scenario. And what makes the perfect fish and chips? My wife. Oh. <laughs> My wife. One man says you're only as good as your last bag of chips, so you've got to try and make sure your last bag of chips is okay to keep the customers coming. So a traditional burnt island and fife fish tea is never complete without a cup of tea and a chip body. Mm. Although the Lynx may have become the forgotten course, golf in Burnt Island certainly hasn't been forgotten. Burnt Island Golf Club has been thriving since 
thriving since 1797 and plays are of course behind us called Doghead and we're heading up there now to do two chaps in the club to take us out for a rugby ball. I'm getting a few off. Well, it originally started in uh, the 1790s. So the original uh, golf was first played at Burnt Island on the, the links down uh, down in the town in the 1790s uh, under the Burnt Island Golf Club. And it moved up to this site uh, about 100 years later in the, in, in the 1890s. And the course was designed originally by uh, old Tom Morris uh, and then laid out by Willie Park and then many years later um, the various modifications were done by James Braid so um, all, all famous names in golf and as I say we tell visitors that come here they are indeed following in the, the footsteps of golfing legends you know. Well, I would describe it as challenging, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think it's a kind of mixture. I mean, because the the holes out the original holes are quite linksy, although mm -hmm. you're not really at the seaside. Um, but it's, it's sand-based turf, uh, whereas the holes near the clubhouse here are more of a parkland feel to them. But um, I mean, I think a lot of people, whether whether people like it or hate it, uh, there's quite a few blind shots to, to the greens. And that can, can put some people off, you know, but, but it's it's a challenge. And I think I think you need you need quite a, a decent game to get around it, and you know, in good fashion, you know. This course has often been described by members as the course that opens up and opens up for its view as you make your way around it. We are here on the 5th, a whole 139 yard par 3 on a massive hill down to the green. And already we can see glimpses of what's just around the corner and it looks incredible. Let's just hope we get this 8 on on the green. Signature holes really the, the views that are you know, the commanding views from the, the eighth uh, fairway. I mean, it's, it's, it's tremendous. It's, you can see all the way up down, down the river floor, down the North Berwick, and up to the bridges. And you know, so uh, as opposed to the, the playability of a hole, I mean, that, that, that would be a signature hole. But any of these holes, like the sixth, the par three out, you, you've got um, Arthur Seat and the Edinburgh Skyline uh, in the background there. Uh, or, the eighth and then playing down the knife back to the water and that. Any, any of those for me would be signature holes. Today, I think we should just take a moment to appreciate 
but I am closest to the pin. <laughs> it doesn't happen often. Thank you. <laughs> Playing the second choice, the, the pins and trying to, just trying to gauge, you know, if it's a front pin that'll hold a blind, uh, a blind hole, but it'll land it short and go on, or if you want to be brave enough to go and land it uh, on the beam itself. You know. But I would say that that's some, probably the most difficult aspect of the course. in this sort of sunlight but oh man the fight went And from one incredibly historic golf course to this awesome historic building. We've come a couple of miles along the road from Burnt Island to the next village of Kinghorn where tonight we're staying in this incredible old town hall. Yes folks, that is our accommodation for tonight. Let's go and check it out. We're a, a building preservation trust and um, we were started in 1997 um, and started because there was a gap in the market of some way to find wonderful new uses for historic buildings. Um, lots of wonderful buildings like this that people really love um, but were maybe vacant or in really bad repair and people wanted to do something with them. So that's what our trust does. We work with uh, funders, we work with local communities to uh, make something fabulous happen in an old building in their community. It's a mix of things. Um, we do have a really good relationship with Fight Council and we do get some funding from them. Um, but we also get funding through the various projects we do. Um, so we've had a lot of support from Historic Environment Scotland and from the National Lottery Heritage Fund. Um, and we also make money from uh, the work that we do like these wonderful holiday lets. So if people come and stay here, they come and stay here in Kinghorn or in Dysart or in Cooper, um, they're contributing to the work of the Trust um, uh, and that all helps us, us to look after other buildings in the future as well. The room we're in now is where the Town Hall met, so it's where all the big decisions were made in King Hall. And yes, it was, it was the court as well, so um, there are uh, cells below where prisoners would have been brought up the spiral stair uh, to find out uh, what justice was going to be meted out to them uh, and then maybe taken away again. Um, we don't make people sleep in cells anymore, <laughs> um, hopefully you're, you've been more comfortable overnight. Um, um, but yeah, I think it's great for people, they come to Fife because there's so much history as well as scenery as well as golf, um, but they can come at the end of the day and stay in their own piece of Fife history and really feel it all around them. This beautiful three-bedroom self-catering apartment has all the more cons you'd expect for a luxury stay and is super cosy and welcoming. When we came in, the heating was on, all the lamps were on and it really felt encouraging to come in. However, this is a building with incredible and important history here in Kinghorn. Once an ecclesiastical building called St Leonard's Tower, it was destroyed by lightning in 1822 
and this incredible building here was replaced on its site in 1829 and used as King Horn's town hall and courtroom. Prisoners actually used to come up from the cells downstairs, up the stairs and find out their fate here in what is now the living and dining area. So with a living room actually bigger than our house at home, we now come into this room, believed to be an old judge's clerical office, has now been turned into a pretty swanky kitchen. With views onto the garden, which used to be used for prisoners' exercise, this is one awesome little room and has one big secret. And this building has a secret staircase, which winds all the way up to the bedrooms. It's pretty dark in here, so I'll meet you at the top. So this grand room upstairs, through the double doors, is our bedroom for the night. I mean, look at that. What was that even used for, I wonder? It is incredible. So as we're staying in this incredible old historic piece of Scottish history here, I decided to actually cook in tonight. As a self-catering, everything is here for us. We've picked up some groceries and basic bits and pieces from the village outside, and I'm gonna cook a real traditional Scottish dinner tonight. Good old fashioned mince and tatties. Lloyd as a southerner is not overly used to that, but while in Scotland, while in Fife, make the most of it. Now I've had my fair share of Scottish food staples since moving here. Haggis, the tatty scone, a lawn sausage, and the obsession with mince and tatties is something I will never, ever get over. However, mince, spuds, an onion, and a carrot has to be one of the most delicious meals I've ever had. <laughs> It shouldn't be good. It just is. Proper Scottish fare is the mince and tatty. It just shouldn't be good. <laughs> it is just mince and a spout. <laughs> so with a busy day filming on the golf course complete, a belly full of mince and tatties, it is finally nice to sit by the fire and thrash Fifi. At a board game, however, we're playing Trivial Pursuit and the general knowledge absolutely sucks. And mine is really good. This is my game. There'll be no thrashing for me tonight. Take your turn. Oh, what's the orange one? Orange is sport. Come on, who won last year's Masters? I know the answer to that. <laughs> this board game is about 45 years old and I don't think it's going to be left with Masters. Oh, come on. What is the diameter of a golf hole? to the nearest inch. I should know this. You better know this. Guys, help me out here. What is the size of a golf hole to the nearest inch? Put your comments down below. Well, it is safe to say, I do not know who the 158th mayor of Plymouth was. <laughs> I don't think anybody knows who the 158th mayor of Plymouth was. It is now 11 p.m. We have a full on day of golf and filming tomorrow. And I think it's safe to say with my bad general knowledge that I'm the winner. Um, I think it's safe to say that I give you hints and tips and clues for every answer we had for a wedge. It's a draw. <laughs> Guys, as always, please don't forget to leave your comments below. Subscribe, like, and as always, we came here for golf and, and this is what, what we saw. saw.